Um, right off the bat, the disclaimer is I'm not a public speaker. So this presentation is not going to look anywhere near as nice as Greg Mercer's, and I apologize for that. <laughs> and you'll also know, in case I pass out or puke, why? <laughs> anyway, so first off, I obviously don't have a pretty picture of myself and information about me, but I'll, I'll quickly go over uh, a little bit about me. Um, I'm the director of operations at Zonblast, which is one of the biggest, first, most powerful uh, platforms for launching products, specifically for Amazon sellers. Uh, but I'll actually talk a little bit more about what it is that we do a little later. Aside from that, I am a seller myself. I have two brands um, that I own, and then I'm a part of two more brands. And then uh, I've consulted for probably about a dozen other sellers over the course of the past couple years. So that by no means means that I'm any kind of an expert. It just means that I've seen a little bit more data than a lot of people get to. Uh, but uh, we'll just dive right into what this is. So what we're going to go over um, today, as Pete said, the uh, three pillars uh, to success in uh, private label selling on Amazon. I have had the unique pleasure of becoming friends and getting to know a lot of really successful Amazon sellers. And there appears to be a common thread. Um, these three actions are uh, essentially what all of them do, uh, almost all of them. Um, you can sometimes get away with two out of the three, uh, but typically that ends up being a, a longer and more expensive process. Uh, but uh, like I said, the people that I know that do well, uh, they do these three things because it's the most efficient, effective way to, in a timely fashion, grow your brand on Amazon and, and be profitable. So those three pillars are uh, optimization of listings, uh, Amazon-sponsored product ads, and then running promotions. Uh, essentially, what those do for you is they increase your findability and buyability. And, and isn't that really what you do for any uh, online property? Drive traffic and conversions. That's, that's all it is. So that's what you need to do on Amazon, too. Um, I'm also going to go over a little bit about the al uh, algorithm, just because I think that it benefits people to kind of understand what it is that Amazon's algorithm does uh, to, you know, so that you can have all the tools necessary to get that visibility. So I am not an Amazon engineer. Um, this is speculation, but um, because of all the data I've been able to collect, I've been able to extrapolate some things about the algorithm, and this is what I imagine it looks like. <laughs> if any of you can solve that, then you need to come up here, because you're going to be well more equipped than I am to talk about this. But uh, essentially, <laughs> OK, so uh, through years of testing and careful focus and study of the market, uh, we've isolated some common behaviors with the A9 uh, as it pertains to search rank. And it appears um, that the things that affect your ranking for keywords are sales velocity over specific benchmark periods of time. Um, and those sales are generated by unique buyers and uh, conversion rates for specific keywords. Um, now, the most interesting thing that we figured out um, was that it also appears that those benchmark periods of time, we, we, we believe we figured out probably what those periods are. It seems that it factors in a moving average of your hourly sales, your daily sales, your weekly sales, your monthly sales, and every six months. So that brings me to um, what I like to call the honeymoon period. Uh, and this actually, we discovered this probably about a year and a half ago. Um, we would sit there and just consistently see some activity in Amazon and, and wonder, do they, do they show extra love to people who are new or to have new listings? And, and, and we'd go, no, there's no, I mean, why would they do that? There's no way. Well, the reason we thought there was no way is because there was no, there, there didn't seem to be any mathematical data to support that. 
until we figured out this whole thing about moving averages. And we started seeing a significant different, uh, difference in ranking at around the six month mark. And we thought, well, maybe that's one of the benchmarks. So what we have concluded is, um, basically the algorithm appears to assign a null value to periods that extend prior to the listing being live. Uh, what that means is that you don't have bad days, bad weeks, or bad months diluting your conversion rate yet. You don't have a bad conversion history. So that means that new listings are infinitely easier to rank. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Now we'll move into optimization. Uh, first, the reason why this is first is because we've seen this is by far the most important thing. Your imagery, particularly your main image, is an extremely important factor in optimization. Uh, what I have on the screen here is a, an example of our first picture, which was DIY. It's not bad, you know, brand new seller, can't afford to get a professional photographer yet. Um, so stepdad, the, the amateur photographer, took some pictures kind of badly cropped them out, put some extra stuff in there because that's what ASM told us to do. And uh, that image, I mean, did pretty good. Um, the numbers on it, though, were 5.49% uh, conversion rate, which actually wasn't really bad for the price and the niche. Um, sessions were at uh, 2,916. However, obviously, once we could afford a professional photographer, um, we did that. LA fashion photographer, very, uh, you know, very high class stuff. We ended up with these beautiful images with a model and everything. And the new image, now this is for the same period of time, but I think it was a year later. Uh, all, or, or not, not a year later, a few months later, all things pretty much stayed the same with the exception of the images. Uh, the new image um, conversion rate went up to 7.73. That was an increase of 2.24%, which is pretty significant. Sessions went up an extra 3,097. So that means that units ordered tripled. Now, those are real sales. That's, that's money in your pocket, and that's just from an image. And that's how powerful your images are to your conversion. Now. It's important to understand what the purpose of your images are. Um, your main image uh, grabs the attention, it grabs the eyes, um, and it actually draws the click and uh, turns it into uh, a legitimate session. So it's important that that does its job. Um, now, other important images are gonna be your product shots and infographics, both of those uh, essentially show every angle of the product and breaks down, explains the parts. Um, what that's doing is substituting the buyer's ability to handle your product. I mean, if they're in a retail store, they can pick it up, they can feel it, they can look, or, you know, look at it real close. They can't do that on Amazon, so you have to give them every opportunity to seem like that's what they're doing. And then uh, action shots, um, which are also very important. And these are, these are gonna show your product in use. So what that does is it gives your potential buyer the ability to imagine themselves using your product. And if you can plant that picture in their head, you're gonna probably get the sale. Um, now, after the images, uh, the title is also very, very important for a couple of reasons. Um, for one, it's the first validation that your potential buyer has um, to ensure that they found what they're looking for. <laughs> so if your title says that your product is this thing that's completely different than what they were searching for, they're not even going to bother clicking on your item even if you have a pretty picture. So that is really important. And then also, uh, it's a really, really important place for uh, keywords in the algorithm draws them directly from the title because the title is, you know, considered kind of an important part of what your product is. Uh, so this right here shows uh, examples of uh, title test. Uh, we had an old title which showed uh, sessions of 5,813 with a 1.36% conversion rate. I know that sounds really 
low, but this is a client of mine that sells a $200 product. And for any of you that sell high dollar items, you know the conversion rates are pretty low um, usually. Um, but that led to uh, 79 unit sales. For a comparable month after we tested a new title, um, same amount of time, sessions went up to 15,213. So they tripled. Conversion rate went up to 2.9%. So that was an extra 1.54%. And then the unit sales went up to 441, which is an extra 362. If you do the math on a $200 product, that was a good month, especially compared to the first one. So again, the title directly pads your pocket. It, it gives you real money from real sales. Um, so how you write a good title, keep this in mind, you're speaking to both the algorithm and your buyers. It needs to be concise, um, but it also needs to have the important keywords. Um, so when you're putting that title together, you're going to use heavily searched relevant keywords, but you're going to place them in a succinct uh, order so that uh, your potential buyer easily understands um, what the product is and ideally the benefit, uh, at least one really good benefit to what it is that your product offers. Um, you, you also want to test this on different browsers to see how it truncates. I know this stuff seems really tedious, but it, it, it does matter. Uh, I think the, the stat that I last read was uh, like 40% of sales on Amazon now are mobile. So, you know, if you have like a really, really long brand name, you probably don't want to put that first uh, just because they, they might get truncated and your mobile buyers might not see what it is that you're selling. Um, so, you, yeah, so you definitely want to consider that in, in, uh, in different, um, different formats. And I guess the idea that you're looking at is, is put yourself in your buyer's shoes. Uh, the buyer needs to be able to scan quick, understand anybody that's searching on Amazon is not going to read every single character, of every single title on the search page. So you got a couple seconds to grab their attention. Make sure that uh, you do that succinctly. You don't need to uh, do a lot of repetition in your title. Um, you don't need to stuff it with the most obvious keywords, just say what it is, make it make sense, make it sound appealing, which I know is a lot easier said than done, but you can read a couple of free copywriting books and have it, have it in a couple hours. All right, after the title, the next most important aspect is your uh, search terms and the back end. A lot of people don't know this, but in our experience, search terms appear to be just as important as the title. Um, a lot of people will argue with that, and the reason why is because um, they won't see the ranking immediately sometimes with search terms. That's because Amazon's algorithm works on terms, not phrases. So over time, it stitches each term into a phrase, and the back end seems to take a little bit longer. So like you'll also notice sometimes when, uh, with a brand new listing, you might not get uh, sessions for PPC keywords back there, but like a month later you will. That's because the algorithm finally caught up. So that's just a little tidbit. But uh, your search term keywords are so very important um, because uh, they really are weighted pretty, pretty significantly. Um, anyway, so when you're setting up your search terms, there's a couple of rules. Uh, you don't need to repeat them. like. If you sell a widget, you don't need to put widget, blue widget, red widget. Don't repeat the keyword. Don't use commas in the back end because there's no reason to. That's a character that's being used up that's unnecessary. Um, and because of the recent change, apparently Amazon is heavily suggesting that you put your keywords in as logical an order as possible. That doesn't mean that it has to actually make sense, but just, you know, big red widget as opposed to widget red big. You know, don't, don't talk like Yoda when you're putting your keywords in there, basically. Um, at any rate, so 
what I have up here is an example of another case study. We had a, a client who did a promotion in not that, I mean, it was, it was a decently competitive uh, niche, but the, the size of the promotion should have resulted in some really significant rank gains. So when it didn't, he contacted us. You know, why, why am I not seeing rank gains? And we were scratching our head like, I don't know, you should have. Well, we just all of a sudden got this idea. Maybe something's wrong with your listing. Why don't you take a picture of your back-end keywords and send them to us? And he did, and the back-end keywords had one word per line repeating the main keyword over and over and over again. So we advised him to change that. Hey, this is how you should set it up. Put your keywords in there. These are, this is an example of actually the keywords that were used, you know, wine tool key opener corkscrew. That was the product. Um, and after he filled it up, within 12 hours, he goes, oh, I'm on page one. <laughs> it was, that's when we realized that keywords are very important because it was, it was literally that significant of a jump. All right. The next section is going to be your bullets and your description. Um, you have very little time to convey the message that you want to convey to your uh, potential buyer. Um, you know, because your listing is a catalog page that's going to be browsed, it's not going to be read. Uh, so that means that, you know, the old way of thinking was this is a great opportunity to put sales copy in there. And you may still be able to do that in your description because if anybody makes it all the way to your description, there's a good chance that they're real interested in what you have. But your bullets, uh, we've actually shied away from, from suggesting that that be a place with heavy sales copy. And the reason why is because we found that most people don't read them. And now with Amazon playing around with the layout, some bullets get truncated. So, you know, like if you have a really long bullets, your first one's the only one that people see anyway. Um, so instead, um, we suggest that you just find the biggest benefits. Um, and if you're confused as to all the benefits that your product offers, a really, really good way to figure them out if you've been selling for any period of time is look at your positive reviews. There's probably a couple things that people have pointed out they really like about your product. That's your main benefits. There you go. Put it in the first bullet. Make it real short. Make it real sweet. Um, frame it as a benefit as opposed to a feature, but you know you don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it. Just be like, hey, you know, um, our blue widget will make you smell really good. Your girlfriend will like it. You know, it, whatever. It just it points out the benefit and it tells them, you know, in the same sentence the feature. If the shorter you make them, the more likely they'll be above the fold in the new layouts when they truncate all the bullets. And that's good. So then you have all the information you could possibly want right there above the fold. And then your description is a good place for tech specs. If you have a technical product that needs specs, put them down there. It's a good place to tell a story if you want to. You can tell, you know, tell them about how you started making this homemade stuff in, in your garage or whatever. Um, like I said, anybody who makes it that far is probably interested in what you have. Um, just make sure that you use uh, at least P tags. If you can get away with using the B tags, that's bold, by the way. That's HTML speak for paragraph and bold. You're technically not supposed to use bold tag, but if you can get away with it, that's a good way to kind of highlight some points you might want to make. But uh, P tags are allowed now. So at least use that. That'll break up you know, so you don't have a wall of text. Um, some people still get pushed back on this. That's because, you know, it's weird, but sometimes Seller Central reps don't seem to all be on the same page. But uh, they have updated a lot of the style guides, and P tags are available, so you can break up that text. Um, at any rate. OK, so after bullets and description, price. And price is actually really important. That probably should have been moved up a little bit farther on this chain. Um, and the reason why is because it's. Uh, very, it, it affects heavily uh, conversion rates. Um, everybody wants to sell at a premium price. I mean, obviously, you want the biggest margin you can possibly get. But um, we have to understand is, is the price that you're offering at a good value? And 
you may learn over time that Amazon buyers, they're not, they're not uh, buying on, on price. That's, that's eBay. People go to eBay to get the really inexpensive stuff. People go to Amazon because they want the best value. And if you are uh, an unknown brand in a space that has any kind of brand presence, it's very possible that your premium price isn't going to go over that well because they just don't see the value. Um, so a lot of us kind of came into this game with this delusion that we should be hitting 70% margins and that's how you make it to $150,000 a month with one product, but it, it, the reality says that doesn't always happen. And actually, it's probably very rare that that does happen. If that happened to any of you, awesome. You should probably also come up here and speak because we want to know about it. But um, I think uh, the important point here is that you have to consider your customer before your margins. And that's crazy, right? It's like, how counterintuitive is that? Uh, you're, you're in business to make money. But if, if you go at it with the approach of, I, I'm trying to create as much value as possible, even though your margins go down to say 30%, your sales, and more importantly, the growth of brand advocates, brand recognition, and everything that's gonna create a legacy for the future will increase and it will pay dividends. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're looking at your price. So this is an example of one of my clients, right? He had a product, it was a good product, it was a quality product, but he was one of the most expensive. He was selling this product at $35. So we wanted to play with price. Uh, I wanted to play with price because you know the sales per day weren't that great. Uh, he was averaging, you know, not not that many, seven, 14 on a good day. Uh, so I slowly started reducing price, which I don't recommend doing it that way. You should actually do it the other way around. But we did it that way. That was lesson learned. Um, anyway. Slowly started moving price down, and as we did, sales increased, increased, increased until we seemed to hit a magic number, 1999. So we went down from $35, where some days you would only make four sales, to 1999, where all of a sudden we we're making 60 sales a day, like overnight, 60, 70, 80. It was a huge difference. And that's when I told him, you know, I know that you think that your gloves are worth $35, but uh, the market doesn't. <laughs> so um, my current strategy, start as low as you can, and then just raise it a dollar like every couple days. And then as soon as you start losing sales hardcore, the market just told you what they think your product's worth. So, okay. Now we're gonna talk about reviews. This is everybody's favorite subject. A lot of people believe that that's the most important thing. And to a degree, I, I, uh, you know, I agree. Uh, social proof drives conversions. It absolutely does. Um, I personally think your first 50 are real important. Like zero to 50, you have to hustle. Do whatever you need to do to get them. I think after that, for the most part, for most niches, there might be some, if you're selling Garcinia Cambogia, this probably doesn't apply to you. But uh, for most niches, 50, around 50 is enough social proof for people to, say, to realize, okay, this isn't a brand new seller. Uh, I feel more comfortable in considering them. Um, and then, you know, once you have that, really the rest falls into place. But uh, this right here is another example of some clients that I had. Uh, so what we did, this is my favorite strategy, and everybody's going to have a different strategy for getting reviews. Uh, I personally think the most powerful is to have a really strong follow-up sequence. Get a uh, sales backer, feedback genius, whatever, whatever works for your business, and follow up with your customers. Um, <coughs> because left to their own devices, most of the time people don't leave a review unless they have something to bitch about. Uh, so you don't want that. You want to remind the people that like you, hey, you know, if you really liked me that much, it would be great if you kind of told the world about it. And that gentle reminder usually converts a few. But uh, so what we have up here is a couple of examples of some clients of mine. One had a supplement um, or was in the supplement niche. 
and we did run a whole lot of promotions, but we had a follow-up sequence in place. The promotions that we ran were not for um, review service. I mean, like in review services, we were running promotions to rank, which we'll talk about later. Um, so in three months, we managed 554 reviews at a 29% conversion with a really well-written follow-up sequence. And then we had another client who was in the pet niche in three months, 380 reviews at a 45% conversion, which is actually to date the highest that I've ever been a part of. And you know, I pat myself on the back and take full credit for that. Uh, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it, this was a result of having a well written, well thought through follow up sequence. It doesn't have to be. Uh, you know, magical copy. It's just, you know, reach out to your customer. Let them know that you're real too and that you invite them to contact you if they need anything. Uh, I personally um, made a thank you video and it's not professionally done. It's totally DIY home camera stuff. But I'm sitting on my couch and I say, hey, you know, I just want to personally thank you. And uh, I put, you know, hosted it on the, on the Amazon cloud so I could have an Amazon link and I put it in my follow-up sequence. And I, my seller feedback is phenomenal because everybody always says, hey, this seller's awesome because they, they have this really cool video and I really appreciated it. Uh, you don't have to be that elaborate though. You could just, just be genuine. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's how awesome a follow-up sequence is to get you reviews. Um, I have a couple of, uh, of pro tips here. Uh, how to get your organic reviews, pro tip, run promotions, uh, use services that I probably shouldn't have plugged so heavily right there, sorry. Um, <laughs> give out you know, coupons for steep discounts, um, you know, because as I was mentioning before, there's no incentive for Amazon buyers to actually review your product. Like Amazon doesn't give them any incentive. Uh, so the average review conversion is like 3%. And like I said, a lot of them are negative. So um, you're depending on their good nature. <laughs> so opening up uh, communication is a great way to get results. Um, another pro tip, as I just mentioned, put in video links, which is, you can look up how to do that. It's really not hard. Once you make the video, you just upload it to the cloud and you get an Amazon link. Um, and those are allowed. Outside links aren't, Amazon links are. Uh, and then um, another great thing to do it makes your emails look cleaner. In your follow-up sequence, hyperlink to the review as opposed to saying, click this link. And you know, it, it just looks so clinical. It's, it's small, I know, but it, it actually works. Just hyperlink to what, whatever you want them to go to, whether that be seller feedback or whether that be the review itself, and that helps. OK. Um, all right. so. Now, why are you trying to get those reviews? That's, that's the other important thing. Let's look at this example. Uh, this was a brand new product. Um, it was launched, but it was ranking. Um, newsflash, I actually know how to do that pretty good, so that's what I did. We were ranking this product. Um, nothing changed within the couple of weeks between these screenshots, except for the number of reviews. Nothing else changed. So sessions went from 42 to 266 in conversion. The most important part of this equation went from 11.9% to 34.96. This was a great supplement, inexpensive, so it, it converts really well. But I mean, those conversions are fantastic. And I believe, we believe, that that was because there was a significant boost in, in the number of reviews. And so people felt they could trust the product a little bit more. All right, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this because I hear that we have a, a, like a PPC wizard speaking in a little bit, but uh, Amazon sponsored product ads is another really important part to, that's obviously one of the, the three pillars that I mentioned earlier, so it's really important. Um, it's a huge piece of the puzzle. Uh, and the reason why, it's important to understand why, is because they allow for greater visibility. Keep that in mind when you're running PPC and you get frustrated because they're not as profitable as you'd like them to be. Understand that when 
potential customers can see your listing more than once, it increases your chance of getting the sale. So it is very important for visibility. Uh, Amazon buyers um, typically don't search for what they want, find it, and then buy it. Uh, they do a lot of browsing. They consider products for a little while. They put them on their wish list. They wait for a sale. They bookmark the page. So you got all this going on. So the, really, the key to winning the race is getting your listing in front of them more than your competition. Um, so if you can be seen as much as possible, like I said, that, that increases your chances. And PPC gives you that opportunity because no matter where you're ranking, you can always also be on the very bottom of the first page or on the right-hand column. So PPC, uh, as I was explaining earlier, because Amazon's algorithm works in keywords instead of phrases, PPC tends to stitch together keywords into various relevant phrases pulled from your listing when you're running things like broad match campaigns, which I'll clarify, but like I said, just a little bit, because the, the wizard will be up in a, in a later. Um, but um, it primarily starts with your title and your search terms, which is why those two things are so important. I mentioned that earlier. Um, and then, of course, I also mentioned sometimes you don't get impressions at first because it takes time for those uh, long tails to be stitched together. Uh, but something that I discovered, and I don't have a lot of data to back this up, but this is a working theory that I'm, I'm running with, things like subject matter, target audience, intended use, all that extra added stuff in your listing, I think those help with the relevancy. So you're probably going to see impressions for your keywords faster if you, if you take the time to fill that stuff out. Um, anyway, a real quick strategy, and most people already know this one, but run an auto campaign for a week so that you can look at what keywords converted. Uh, it's the best way to get data directly from Amazon. Um, and then that'll give you a great idea uh, for what keywords you want to put into other campaigns. Um, you take the keywords. Uh, oh, another thing too that you can do is adjust your listing because you know you're allowed to change that, right? Um, so if you find keywords that you didn't think of that people are actually buying your product through PPC from an auto campaign and it's not in your title because maybe it's just in your back end because you didn't think it was important enough, move it to your title. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, take uh, keywords that you see are profitable and continue gathering data, but make your auto campaigns a low CPC and low daily budget because you don't want to blow a, whole mo a lot of money in that. And um, start filtering them through the other types, phrase match. Go down to exact match. You want to put the most amount of your budget into exact match because these are proven keywords that make you money. So what you want to do is give them the largest amount of your your PPC budget. Anyway, I'll briefly explain what these are because I do know that our expert has decided he doesn't really feel like having to explain this part, which I understand it's, it's common knowledge, but I'm going to briefly go over them. Broad, an example of broad match campaign, or a broad match keyword, uh, you target blue widget, it's also going to hit widgets that are blue. As long as both words are in it, it's a broad match, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show for that. Phrase, you put in blue widget, you're going to get big blue widget, you know, um, small blue widget. It's going to always keep the words blue and widget in the same order because that's the phrase, but all the words around it can change. And then exact, you're not going to show for anything other than blue widget because it is what it is. It's exact. So that's, yeah, there you go. Okay. Now, the last part, the last pillar, promotions. Um, it's, it's actually an age-old marketing strategy, uh, creating exceptional value through discount deals to drive sales. That's what a grand opening sale is. I mean, this has been done forever. Um, in terms of Amazon, this is where uh, you can create coupons, you know, little promo codes that you create in your back end for deals uh, that will entice buyers to make the purchase now. That's, I mean, that's, that's what they're for. So launching efficiently involves taking your discount promo codes and feeding them to a large list of Amazon buyers. Um, basically getting your grand opening sale in front of as many people as possible. 
Uh, this gives the algorithm exactly what it wants to rank your product, higher for search terms. Sales, we talked about this, remember? Sales plus sales velocity plus conversions. That's what you get when you run a promotion and that's what Amazon's algorithm wants to rank your keyword. So uh, directing those buyers through keyword embedded URLs uh, basically helps the algorithm to decide the most relevant terms to rank your listing for first. Um, over time, you're gonna end up, rank if you continue to increase sales velocity, you're gonna, you're gonna rank for all of your relevant keywords um, but when you direct them through uh, special URLs, you can, you can kind of help make that decision for Amazon quicker than they would, which can be important to your promotion strategy. Um, so by using these special URLs, you're effectively controlling which relevant terms um, see an increase first. Now, one of the best ways to do a launch is with a third-party service um, that has already cultivated that large list of Amazon buyers. If you've cultivated that large list of Amazon buyers on your own, then that's the best thing you can do. <laughs> but a lot of people first starting out don't have a list like that, so third-party services do exist. Um, now, when you go looking for the services, you'll find two types, sales-centered, which are designed to help rank for keywords, and review-centered, which are helped or are completely designed to get you more reviews. Most of the services will say that they give you both. Understand that all of them excel at one or the other, usually. So keep that in mind. And which one you go with is all going to depend on what you feel your business needs at that time. Um, anyway, so this is the part where I, uh, start talking about what Zonblast does. Zonblast is a sales-centric platform, not a review service. That's not what we do. If you want a review service, I highly recommend ReviewKick because it's free and Greg Mercer is awesome. But we are centered entirely around increasing sales velocity to rank your products for the relevant keywords of your choice. Uh, we have one of the largest lists of Amazon consumers in the industry at this time. And uh, we put your offer in front of them, and that drives sales, velocity, and conversions. See how it's all kind of fitting together now? Um, and the proof is in the pudding. We rank page one for super competitive keywords time and time again, over and over. And the reason why is because we're providing, we're helping you get visibility. By ranking page one, visibility, visibility, visibility. So this. It's just a couple of examples of, uh, I know it's probably hard to see the small, the small print, but these are really, really, really competitive keywords. And they did promos with us, and they ended up ranking tremendously for those keywords. Uh, one keyword had over a million searches a month according to Merchant Words, and over a million according to Google as well. Uh, rank went from 33 to number one. That's pretty huge. That's actually probably one of the biggest jumps we've seen, but still, that stuff happens regularly. And then another one, you know, 950,000 uh, searches a month went from number 179 to six. Page one, page one, page one, regularly. It's, it's, it's pretty powerful. Um, anyway, so putting it together, uh, conversions plus Visibility equals sales and profit. That's, in conclusion, that, you know, using these three pillars, that's, that's you'll get there in the most efficient, timely manner, and, and I mean, that's what it's all about. Um, now, understand that you'll always be tweaking the amount that you use these three things. You'll always go in when you learn about keywords through your PPC campaigns and adjust those, or adjust your, your title and your listing. Maybe you'll run more promotions this month, but not so much the following month because visibility for page one, you've got, but you want to start adjusting your PPC so you get on page two as well. So it's, you know, it's not an exact one-third, one-third, one-third kind of thing. It's ever going and changing and shifting, but those three things are extremely important. So that concludes it.
Uh, before we get into the question and answer, I do want to invite you all to visit www.zomblast.com forward slash summit. Uh, you can download these slides, you can download a white paper that we wrote a little while ago, and then also uh, you'll get a coupon code for a really awesome deal, 25% off our optimization and review rush service, and 25% more credits for subscriptions. So without further ado, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, we've got time for one question. Who gets their hand up first? I've planned that perfectly. Is that a, yeah, if, uh, is that a book? Okay. Is that a book that you can think of for the first time Amazon seller? That, or two or three books that can give us some idea how to start off at home, starting from home, one product seller. Okay, so most books on the subject suck. I mean, it's true. They're, they're awful. Uh, seriously, though, most of them are like 50 pages of let me sell you my course. It's terrible. There was a book written. It was actually one of the first ones. I cannot remember the name of it, but I'm pretty sure I have it in my Kindle. I could try to find it. But it was written by, um, I can't remember if he was a doctor or if he just had like a, uh, he had a high degree or something. And it was, this was like right before ASM got really big. So uh, Amazon Selling Secrets, I think is what it was called. Um, no, no, it's, it's, it's some like Indian dude or, or something, I think. Anyway. That book actually was informative. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it because, uh, like I said, most of the stuff out there is, is poopy. So, All right, Anthony, we'll try to figure out what that secrets. book was while our next speaker is speaking. And if you want to know the book, come, uh, come talk to Anthony after the next presentation. There you go. Hey, give a big round of applause for Anthony.